So the Quran for them was something to be acted upon, not something that you memorize or something that you read and you don't implement. It was a way of life for them. And we are trying to put this, as I said yesterday, I quoted Imam Al Qayyim, when he said, لَبُدَّ مِنْ مُخَاطَبَةِ أَهْلِ كُلِّ زَمَانٍ بِالِاصْطِلَاحِ الَّذِي يَعْرِفُونَ you have to speak to each nation, to each generation in the language they understand. And language keeps changing. You know, you know, this, the language could keep the original meanings and the original words, but there are so many connotations. Language is a package. So many things go missing throughout the time. Now this is why I'm trying to put this in somehow modern terms, so we really appreciate what we are doing. So shaitan has a strategy for us. Now I want someone to tell me what is our hist when did this enmity start? Let's take a historical background. When did this enmity with shaitan start? Since the creation of Adam. Who can give me details? That was a later stage. There's a stage before that. There was even one before that. Excellent. When yeah, when Adam first was created, and before the soul was blown into him, Shaitan came and he, che che he checked Adam, and he realized that he was hollow from inside. He was hollow. So he said, If I'm given power over you, jealousy started from, that time, from day one. That's the reason why Shaitan has this enmity, jealousy. He realized Adam was a special creation. He was honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, he didn't want anyone to compete with him in this regard. So he said, if I'm given power over you, I shall destroy you. That was from day one. Then, as Uncle Abu Yusuf Khair said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew the soul into Adam, what was the first thing Adam said? Alhamdulillah, ahsant. Why did he say that? He sneezed. And what did Allah say to him? Yarhamuk Allah. Imagine, this is why this nation, our nation, is the Ummah of Hamd. We are the nation of Hamd. The first thing Adam said, the first word, he said, Alhamdulillah. And if you want the mercy of Allah, you hold on to Alhamd. And this is why the Prophet says uh, about himself on the Day of Judgment, وَأَنَا صَاحِبُ لِوَاءِ الْحَمْدِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا فَخْرِ I hold the flag of Alhamd on the Day of Judgment. I hold it. That's all honor and dignity. So, and the first ones to enter paradise are Alhamdun, as the Prophet ﷺ said. The first ones to enter paradise are Alhamdun. What is the difference between Hamd and Shukr? I'm taking you into in branches, then we'll come back, inshallah. What is the, what's the difference between Hamd and Shukr? They told me Shaykh Mashhur explained Surah Al-Fatiha. He must have said that. Okay. Okay. Did you see? Did you listen to that? Did you hear that? Shukr is thankfulness, and alhamd is thankfulness and praise. Yes. Who agrees with that? Who disagrees? Who's not sure? <laughs> okay. Basically, a shukr is thankfulness. You thank somebody for a favor they, they did to you, or they, made, they did for you. That's it. And thankfulness could be in actions or words. So you can be thankful in your attitude, in your behavior, and you can be thankful by what? Saying thank you. That's thanks. But alhamd can only be done with the tongue. Only with the tongue, alhamd. Because it's praise, it is praise. But the word praise carries very little meaning compared to alhamd. Now alhamd, what it means, you thank someone for a favor, yes? But alhamd, you make alhamd for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's, his names are the most, are the perfect. And his attributes are the complete attributes. So you... Alhamd is due to the greatness of Allah. We thank Allah because of His favors, but we praise Him because of His greatness. Because He's the most perfect. 
He's the one free from all deficiencies. His attributes are the most perfect. And the, 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 the issue of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just a different world. It's a different world. And it's the shortest way to paradise. Imam al Qayyim says, Inna ibadat Allah bi asma'ihi wa sifatih aqrabu tariqin ila al jannah. Tariqun sahlun qaribun musil aqtharu al nasi fi ghaflatin an. La qutta'a fih wa la khatara. Subhanallah. It's the shortest way to paradise to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His names and attributes. And actually, we are designed, our hearts are designed in a format to correspond perfectly and to respond perfectly to the names and attributes of Allah. So each one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a place in your heart. If it falls in it, your heart will change. And inshallah, as, as I said, we'll come back to the articles of faith. When we come back to them, Inshallah, I will, I will go into this area. So we are the nation of Hamd, I said, and we'll come back now again to the enmity with Shaytan. So Shaytan, from day one, he started the enmity with Adam alayhi salam. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the, the angels and Shaytan was with them to prostrate themselves before Adam. They all did, Shaytan refused out of arrogance. So he challenged the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he do? Do you know what we call this? We call this in, in Arabic, alayya wa ala a'da'i. He destroyed himself. He was in paradise. He was the best. He was even in a rank higher than the angels. But just out of jealousy of Adam, he sacrificed all of this. You see what jealousy could do? It could destroy yourself and destroy the, the person you are jealous of. What do, you, what do we call this in, in, in today's world, in today's terminology? Suicide bombing. <laughs> so, actually, Shaytan is the, is, the, is the biggest terrorist in the world. He's the biggest terrorist in the world. He destroyed himself and he's trying to destroy human beings. So he's a suicide bomber. He destroyed his future. He destroyed his, the, the, the privileges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. So it started by that. Now, what did he say after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expelled him from his mercy, kicked him out of paradise? What did he say? Yeah. yeah. He said, Anzirni ila yawmi yubathun. His wish was what? Imagine how, how, how much hatred he had. He had no experience with Adam, but only out of jealousy, he had this hatred. He said, my only wish is that you let me live until the day of judgment, until the end of time. Just let, let me live until the end of time. Allah said, I'll give you that. I grant you this wish. So what did he say? What, what is he going to do with this? He said, I shall dedicate my life and all my resources, everything I have, my future, my past, my talents, my potential, I shall dedicate this to do what? I'll, I shall send them astray. How, 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 he's the biggest loser. The biggest loser. Allah has given you privilege, you know. Just focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship Him. This is what hatred and enmity does to you. So never get caught up in a state of enmity. If it becomes the center of your life, you can destroy yourself and others. But Islam teaches us to be constructive. Let your main concern be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Enmity will not have place in your heart. So shaitan sacrificed everything. In one verse he said, لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ أُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ Ighwa means what? Oh, I shall seduce them. I shall uh, miss, uh, not mislead. I shall, yeah, yeah just not really mislead. I'm, I'm trying to be very careful with the words. I shall seduce them. I shall get them into sin. Okay, beautify sin. I shall trick them. This is what it means. I shall dupe them. These are words trying just to capture the meaning. Okay, so it's all about making sins attractive. That's number one. In another verse, in another surah, he says, لَأُضِلَّنَّهُمْ I shall lead them astray. So now shaitan has two long-term strategies. Two long-term strategies. What are they?